Quite a few people have asked me how to travel with guns. Many people seem to be intimidated or confused about how to fly with guns, and I wanted to share how I do it. But since every jurisdiction is different and each airline has their own policies, I'm not gonna be explicitly telling you what to do, but just sharing what's worked for me, and hopefully that'll help you out. It's also important to clarify that I'm referring to transporting declared firearms in checked baggage and not carry-on. <laughs> Attempting to carry a gun in carry-on luggage is extremely illegal in almost every situation and will likely lead to TSA or airport police detaining you and you'll probably miss your flight. Thanks a lot, Bin Laden. The entire process can be broken down into three stages. Packing, airport ticket counter, and then baggage claim. And I'll guide you through each of these stages based on my experience. If you want to support this channel so I can keep making videos like this, then head over to Mantis using my affiliate link below and grab one of their dry fire training devices. Their Blackbeard and Blackbeard X are specifically designed for the AR-15, and these devices allow you to practice dry fire without having to cycle the action after each shot because they automatically reset the trigger. And the Blackbeard X uses an accelerometer and Bluetooth to sync with the Mantis Laser Academy, and this can further analyze your shot groups to help work on your fundamentals. And if you use my affiliate link below in the description of the video, it'll help support the channel at no extra cost to you, which is awesome, especially when YouTube likes to demonetize channels like this. So thanks for your support, and let's get back to the video. And before you fly, make sure the destination you're flying to doesn't have any unconstitutional gun laws that you might be violating at baggage claim when you pick up your luggage. Because you might depart a law-abiding citizen, and then when you land, be committing a felony at baggage claim. Even if if you had an unplanned layover and the airport required you to pick up your luggage and take it to the hotel. The best I can do is get you guys set up with a suite at the Radisson. Oh, that's terrific. Would it be possible to take us out to Sizzler and get us McDonald's? You might be in an area that if you pick up that luggage, right to jail, right away. But assuming there are no legal issues with the destination you're flying to, let's start with packing. Before I even start packing, I empty all my bags and all my luggage to make sure there's no ammunition and no firearms in any of it. <laughs> For long guns, I use cases like this Pelican case. And then for handguns, I use smaller cases like this one. These get transported inside other luggage while the longer cases get transported by themselves. When you declare your firearms at the ticket counter, they have to be unloaded. So go ahead and do that ahead of time and clear them out at your house. And another thing I like to do is use chamber flags. This way you can have one more visual check that that firearm is clear. I then turn off any electronics. And then for the lights, I will typically unscrew the head cap like a quarter turn. That way it doesn't turn on and heat up or waste my battery. And then once you get to your destination, make sure you check it and inspect everything. And when it comes to ammo, each airline is different. Some airlines allow you to transport the ammo in magazines, while other airlines require you to transport it in the manufacturer's box. My advice is just to get on your airline's website and they should have something about how you have to fly with ammo. Next, make sure you have a lock or a padlock for every lock hasp that your case has. I also don't use TSA locks because I'm supposed to be the only one who has access to the lock. But apparently TSA doesn't understand this logic because this is what it says on their website. Only the passenger should retain the key or combination to the lock. You may use any brand or type of lock to secure your firearm case, including TSA recognized locks. The problem with this is TSA locks are universal locks, which means that anyone who works with TSA has a key to that lock, which would violate the earlier part of that rule. And then after ensuring that the firearms are unloaded and in the state they should be in, I take the padlocks and I put them inside the case. I don't put the padlocks on yet, because when I get to the airport, they will ask me to open it at the airport so that I can put the firearms declaration card inside the case. Now, if you live in an area that requires you to transport firearms in a locked container or has some stipulation about transporting firearms in your vehicle, you're gonna have to abide by that. I'm just sharing what I do. Then make sure you know which of your cases and which of your luggage has the firearms and needs to be declared so that you don't inadvertently check a bag before declaring the firearm or worse, try to transport that luggage through security. And TSA is notorious for cutting locks. So what I do is put my phone number next to where the lock is. Can I have your number? So hopefully if they feel the urge to cut those locks, they'll call me. Excuse me, can I touch you for a minute? I'll be able to come over there and give them a key so they won't have to cut the locks. I then take an Apple AirTag that's paired with my iPhone and I put that inside the case. That gives me the ability to track the case at any point so that if the airline loses it and doesn't know what city it's in, I can tell them exactly Exactly where it is and when I get on the plane I can pull up the find my app and make sure that the case got loaded onto the plane next let's talk about some logistics going to the airport 
if you want to carry your gun from your house to the airport, you have to think about the details of what you're gonna have to do when you actually get to the airport. So if you're taking a ride share and they're gonna drop you off at the departure curb, there's not many private locations where you're gonna be able to go to take your gun out of the holster, unload it, put it in the case, lock it up, put the ammo how it should be. So plan ahead how you're gonna get your gun and the ammunition in the state they need to be in for the ticket counter. And then after I get to the airport and reach the ticket counter, the first thing I say to the ticket agent is that I would like to declare a firearm. I don't just say I have a gun. It's not like I have a bomb in here. It's not like I wanna blow up the plane. Sir. I just wanna stow my bag according to your safety regulations. I then tell them which cases have firearms and then I separate that from the rest of my luggage. I then give them my ID so they can verify me and get my ticket ready while I fill out the firearms declaration card. And on the back, you have to sign it and that's saying that the firearms are unloaded. After you finish filling out the card, they'll put them in the case that's by itself. Then they will have you put the other card on the outside of the case that's gonna be inside of another bag. And they will take those and then put them on the conveyor belt. Once we go through, just need to find that case. And then after they take your luggage back, there's really nothing you can do at that point. So go through security, get loaded on the plane, and then once you land, the next thing you'll do is go to baggage claim. The firearm that was declared and checked in regular luggage should just come out on the normal conveyor belt. And then longer gun cases typically come out in the oversized baggage area. The oversized baggage area then asks me for my ID to confirm it's me because I'm picking up a firearm. And then after ensuring I have all my luggage and all my cases, I leave the airport. Once again, it's crucial that you understand the laws of the jurisdiction you're flying to and making sure that you don't violate any unconstitutional laws when you pick up your bags. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also hit that bell to fight back against YouTube's anti-gun algorithm. Thanks again for watching, and as always, train to a higher standard.